Oh, wow, that was unnecessary. Low effort, try again. You got toe thumbs. Nasty. I seriously don't like you one bit. I don't like bugs! Oh, oh, hmm, that was, that was harsh. Okay, wow, wow, whoa. Ah, that one, that one hurts right here, just a little bit. Man, you wash your mom with that mouth? Wait, you wash your mom, you wash your mouth? Your mom wash your mouth out? Fake, fake, you're a fake. You're a fake loser. Well, uh, one thing's for sure, people can be mean. All right, in this video, we're gonna be responding to Deep Pocket Monster's most hateful comments. Why? Well, we gotta talk about this, and maybe it'll be fun. Maybe I'll cry. Maybe it'll make me upset, and I can't pretend to be upset right now. Anyway, what I'm really hoping for is that by talking about this, you'll be better prepared for when hate potentially comes your way. It'll be very difficult to handle. And if you're a creator, especially a first-time creator on any platform, but especially on YouTube, it's really just gonna be a matter of time. I've been on YouTube since 2009 on my other channel, Pat Flynn. I started my own business in 2008. I've written multiple books. I own multiple companies. I've heard it all, which is why I wasn't surprised that only after a few videos, after starting this channel 10 months ago, I already started to see comments that look like this. And we're gonna start easy here. Your thumbs look gross. Can't trust those thumbs. What the hell's wrong with your thumbs? Bro, your thumbs look like what I see when I take a dookie. Hey look, it's me in the bathroom. Wow, that looks very familiar. I do have to admit though, I do have kind of weird looking thumbs. It's sort of unfortunate as a PokeTuber who opens cards up close using a high def camera, but here's the first thing to know about mean comments on YouTube. Whether to be actually mean or people are just poking fun, I guarantee you that these people would never say something like that to your face in person. It's because it's online and mostly anonymous. People can hide behind their keyboards thumbs are ugly. So does that make it okay? Well, no, absolutely not. You could directly affect a person's mental health if you keep saying these kinds of things to people. So here's the thing, when you get people commenting about how you look or something that's weird or different about you, here's what you need to know. In general, some people just have that kind of normal reaction to something that's different or strange to them. It doesn't mean it's bad, we just happen to be hearing it from people who didn't grow up with a filter or empathy with regards to what they might be thinking or saying. Let me tell you about my friend, Sally Hogshead. And yes, that's her last name, Hogshead. So Sally is a friend of mine, last name Hogshead. And you can imagine what her life must have been like when she was a kid, right? Growing up with that name. Uh, very, very tough, she said. She said she was getting picked on all the time. I was getting bullied because her last name was Hogshead. You know how cruel some kids can be sometimes. But eventually she learned to embrace that last name. So much so that it's actually now her brand name for her consultation and her speaking and all of her books. Sally Hogshead, it's actually right there in her logo. And I love that idea of just embracing who you are and knowing that what makes you weird and different is actually what makes you stand out and not like anybody else. So Sally has the saying, different is better than better. And I absolutely love that. You know, I say, you know what, embrace your weird. What makes you different makes you unique and that's what can help you stand out. Well, uh, moving on to the next comment, we're leveling up now. This one says, what a loser. That's imagine dedicating your life into Pokemon cards. All right, let's talk about this comment. And no, we're not gonna knock on this person for their grammar. Grammar, whenever you see something that's just misspelled or missaid, it's very easy to point those things out. Typically people who point those things out uh, don't have a good argument otherwise. So they kind of typically go to that, um, but that's okay. We're not gonna talk about that we kind of get the point of what this person is saying. Plus, let's just correct this on the screen right now because I'm sure it's bothering everybody. All right, first of all, in life, you're gonna get a lot of comments and people saying things about you that are just plain untrue, right? And sometimes we get so defensive about those things, but honestly, if they're saying something that's untrue, then what do you have to worry about? My life is not dedicated to Pokemon. I don't do this full time here on Deep Pocket Monster. Therefore, this person, his comments factually incorrect, which makes his entire argument just kind of non-existent. But what if my life was dedicated to Pokemon and I was called a loser? I know a lot of people whose lives are dedicated to Pokemon. Are they losers? Here's the thing I learned over the years and something I only wish I knew sooner. And that is hurt people hurt people. Meaning people who are hurting others and saying these really nasty things are usually hurt themselves. So instead of getting mad or upset or sad about something that a person might say about me, I often default to, wow, what is going on in this person's life to say such things to a random stranger on the internet? I often wonder, are they okay? Like, honestly, I hope they're okay. I choose empathy over uncontrollable emotion. <laughs> Pika 
Now, typically the best thing to do is to ignore the haters. If you have a YouTube channel or a blog or something like that, you could just turn off comments, you could delete those comments and block that person from the channel. And that's typically recommended. However, I wanna tell you a story about a person who emailed me at Deep Pocket Monster and said they hated my channel so much and they wish I never got into the community. It's just a few months ago. It was actually pretty harsh to read because you don't ever want anybody hating on something that you're doing, especially when you're doing it out of joy and passion and love. So I reached back out to this person and I said, well, I'm sorry that I'm not able to give you something that you enjoy, but I'm just curious. What is really going on in your life that gets you so upset? And this person's response really told the full story. You see, this person, his parents had just gotten divorced. In a lot of my videos here, you might see my son and or daughter in them playing together and being a happy family. Plus, I do a lot of giveaways and this person signed up for a few and did not win. Not everybody wins. And he just felt angry and upset and took it out on me and my channel. And in that same message where he was explaining all this, he decided to apologize. And he felt very sorry for the way he acted and what he said to me. I said, it's totally cool, I get it. And yes, I do, because I've seen this time and time again. Hurt people hurt people. And this person's now a member of the Gem Mint Club. He wished to remain anonymous here, so I'm not gonna mention his name. So for the people out there who have called me or are going to call me a loser, uh, first of all, I hope you're okay. And second of all, maybe we're just playing a different game here. You're an absolute scammer. Well, let's talk about it. You know, this one's interesting because uh, I don't sell any of my cards to my audience here, and I don't do any box breaks or anything like that. However, I do do a lot of giveaways, and for whatever reason, a lot of people think those are actually fake. This person right here just happened to unsubscribe because they were tired of the overhyped giveaways. The giveaways are real. There's evidence. I've had a lot of people tell me that a lot of my shorts and my YouTube videos here are absolutely fake, right? They're edited so that I get the best pulls. I've maybe resealed some of these things. First of all, I don't want the time for that, right? It's not even worth it at all to do something like that. Second of all, especially when I get a new set and I get good pulls, I don't have the cards to put good pulls in if I were to reseal them. Anyway, there's been a lot of theories and people literally breaking down how I would do it. Very interesting stuff. Complete waste of time if I were to do that. Lots of built a reputation in my other business for years on trust and authenticity. It would be really, really idiotic of me to potentially tarnish all of that by resealing some modern cards. Not doing it. And for a lot of people who didn't believe me, I got a lot of emails about this. I've said, hey, I'm happy to send you the slow, pre-recorded 20 minute no cut video about me opening some modern set like EV Heroes or something. And then everybody goes, you know what? No, no, no worries. It's all good. I'm like, well, why are you saying this on YouTube? Anyway, you know, a lot of people are saying right now things like you're a scammer, you're a scammer, you're a scammer. There's a lot of finger pointing going on, right? And it's almost taken the same meaning as like, bro, your stuff is just way overpriced. When it comes to scamming, right? There's definitely a line, but at the same time, can you blame the fact that people are saying these things all the time? I don't blame them. I mean, I think it makes complete sense that people are stepping up and saying, yo, I think this person is overpriced or yo, this person's doing bad things here. That box has been resealed. Whatever the case may be, that's a good thing. This is the whole point of community, right? We don't just keep to ourselves. We say things to benefit the other community members. So if we're trying to protect people from wasting their hard earned time and money, well, hey, then this is a good thing, right? So of course, like true scammers who have the intention of ripping people off, not cool. They should be ashamed of themselves. But again, if you know that you're not doing anything wrong and you're being authentic, just keep going. People are gonna talk. They're gonna say things about stuff they don't know the full story about. You just keep going. Now, what if you did something by mistake, right? You didn't intentionally mean to scam people, but in the end, you ended up kind of doing that and ripping people off potentially. What would you do in that situation? Even if you didn't intend for that to happen, but based on the reactions, yeah, you kind of did. And though you didn't intend for things to blow up like that, what if it did? Well, this has happened to me in the past. I'm not gonna get into the full details here, but in 2010, I partnered with somebody who I didn't know at the time, but ended up becoming a scammer. And they were somebody who were inflating numbers and they were pretending to be somebody that they were not. And because I was partnered with this person and this partnership was absolutely public, the torches and the pitchforks came out in droves. People lost their trust in me. I started to actually receive hate mail and people were leaving and wanted nothing to do with me anymore. Can I blame them though? No, because I didn't take the time to do the right due diligence to make sure that I had the right kind of partner. And what does that mean for the relationship I had with my audience? So was I able to brush it off very easily? Not at all. Those kinds of comments hurt and they knock you down. I mean, nobody wakes up in the morning and says, yay, I can't wait for more hate today. So what did I do from there? I eventually stepped up 
and owned my mistake. I admitted that I also waited too long to do that. In reality, I should have done the right due diligence. And as soon as I heard about the news about this person, I should have created a video or something to let people know that I was upset, that I was disappointed, and that I knew that I was gonna have to take some time to earn people's trust back. Because I waited a little bit, it got worse because people, when they don't know what's going on exactly, they're going to make up something so that they can make some understanding out of it. And this is where rumors and all these other things start to happen and really, really become a bad situation. So the way I like to think about it now is if I make a mistake, I wanna own up to it first. I wanna be the one to tell the full story about it and own up to it before other people do. It's sort of like the final rap battle scene in Eminem's Eight Mile. This is kind of a spoiler. Anyway, what he does in his final rap, he makes fun of himself essentially the whole time. He points out all the things that he knew his partner was gonna say about him, all the mean things, and he said it about himself first, thus removing any ammunition that his opponent had and he ended up winning the battle. It's kinda, I can't believe I'm talking about Eight Mile on a Pokemon channel, but yeah, here we are. If you make a mistake, authenticity is the way out, always. It's uncomfortable, it's gonna hurt, maybe you hurt a few people, but it's gonna be worse if you just let it go on. The right thing to do is the right thing to do. And if for whatever reason, you might need to take some time to recover, to breathe, whatever. But here's the other truth about this, because I had a hater derail me from my content creation back uh, in the day. I had some really hateful comments said about myself and I could not handle it, I just wanted to escape. And a friend told me, Pat, every second you waste thinking about this hater is a second you are taking away from the people who love you, the people who need you, the people who appreciate what it is that you do. And it was at that moment that even though it was hard and even though I was very hurt, I wasn't going to let that get in the way of me potentially helping others. That would have been very selfish. So to finish off to the haters, pray that you get better. To the trolls, have fun sleeping under the bridge. <laughs> and to all the deep pocket monster viewers out there, I bet you didn't know that the deep and deep pocket monster would sometimes mean we gotta go deep in here. Here's to you and your success, appreciate you, and uh, share this with somebody who you might think might need it right now.